Pet parenting is a journey and it's about the journey, not necessarily the destination. And some of us, as we learn how to be better pet parents, how to better take care of our dogs and our cats, have this overwhelming need to share with the world everything we're learning because it is so impactful when we actually take the time and the energy to implement all the things we learn with our own pets. Today's guests, Bryce and Kinsey of BK Pets, are those pet parents. They dug deep to make their pets' lives better. And in doing so, they had the need, the overwhelming need to share with the world. And thank goodness they did because they are making such a huge impact on pets' lives everywhere. So today we're going to talk about everything from the stint they spent living in a van (laughs) to the woo-woo to the book they have coming out, which I am so incredibly excited about. This is going to be a manual for the modern day pet parent. I am so excited for today's episode with Bryce and Kinsey, not just because they have so much incredible knowledge to share with you as a pet parent, but because they're now my friends and I just respect everything they're doing. I love the messages that they are putting out to the world. And if you're not already following them, I hope you do after today's episode. Make sure to stick around to the end where Bryce and Kinsey give you their top three tips for any pet parent today. No matter where you are in your pet parenting journey, journey, these are the top three tips that you need to take away to become, to start your path, to start your journey to becoming a better pet parent. So without any further ado, here's Bryce and Kinsey of the BK Pets. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Bryce, Kinsey, thank you so much for being here with me. I'm so excited to have you both. And I know you have a book coming out soon that I do want to talk about. But before we talk about the book, I have some questions for you guys. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you. And I'm sure everybody knows who you are. But just to kind of give everybody a refresher, like, who are you? <laughs> Uh, so we are Bryce and Kinsey of the BK Pets. And first of all, thank you so much for having yes. us. It's an absolute honor. I think this might be like the second podcast we've ever been a guest on. So yeah. we're very new to being guests on podcasts. We greatly appreciate it. But <laughs> like I said, we're Bryce and Kinsey. We created the BK Pets. So Bryce, Kinsey, BK. And our goal is to really just empower pet parents and help them enrich and extend the lives of their dogs and cats. And so we teach, you know, things on nutrition, mental enrichment, removing toxins from the home, what we kind of call overall modern pet parenting. That's, that's what we do right now. Yeah. Yeah, it is very much modern pet parenting, isn't it? So I, I, I take it that's why you started. You're like, you're just trying to share all this wonderful information that you guys have been like acquiring, learning to make your pets' lives better. What, what was your like aha moment that got you guys started that made you start BK Pets and like actually go out there, put yourself out? First of all, putting yourself out there on social media is terrifying. So I applaud you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, our first experience, honestly, Creating content has been at the core of our relationship from day one. So we met doing a social media internship at the University of Wyoming. We were in the athletic department. So, you know, down on the football fields and the basketball courts, we were the ones getting photos and videos and posting Instagram stories and all that stuff. So we met there. We eventually started dating. And after that, we kind of knew that we wanted to work together and and content was really wasn't all we knew, but that was like all we knew professionally in terms of, you know, anything, any creative outlet. Mm -hmm. So, 
So we tried a different podcast. We tried a blog. We tried an Instagram account where other people were sending in photos and we were just posting them. You know, like dogs of Instagram? Yeah. We tried to do van dogs of Instagram. So incorporate van life into kind of the dog community. We did have a stint in van life. We yes. did. Yeah. Um, and then how this all really got started is we were making resin pet ID tags and Bryce put out a video. We were selling like two a week on Etsy and we were like, <laughs> we're going to make it. <laughs> and then uh, he put out a video and it got 7 million views and we did $10,000 in sales, quit our jobs. This is like in a matter of six days. So like yeah. on a Tuesday, we put out this video by the following Monday, 10,000 in sales, 7 million views, quit our jobs to do these resin pet tags <laughs> yeah and like win or learn never lose never fail but we totally failed we hired too many people to help kept the orders open tried to bring in wholesale products to alleviate or like add in some extra income i think in hindsight we were going to end up turning it into a natural pet store mm -hmm. with like a slight a slight twist on like we got into collars and we were maybe going to do harnesses and leashes along with the pet tags and some stuff. supplements yeah like some, like some shitty supplements sorry i don't know if i can cuss on this podcast <laughs> some not so great cuss, uh, supplements yeah and bryce would i mean our livelihood was depending on virality at the time so he would put out like 15 videos a day just hoping to send people to our store our like e-commerce store um and then that all did not end well, and it was ended up being just us two finishing it up. And yeah. one day, we well, we, we ran out of money and had to let everyone go, shut down the business. Yeah, that time we had like two hundred thousand followers on TikTok just from a few viral videos, mm -hmm. and we were getting lick mats out of a box that was sent to us to put into other box that we bought to send to other people. And I was like, "What are we doing? Like, we're already making the content about this. Let's try something new." So then it was, we were like, okay, we're going to try to pursue content creation. And the aha moment was I was taking a bath and our store, we had a physical store as well. It's right across the street from our house. And Bryce our was over there. Basement apartment, I should yeah. say. <laughs> but Bryce was over there and he runs in, opens the door and is like, I know exactly where our content needs to go. We need to change everything. I just listened to this podcast with Dr. Karen Becker. We were feeding Purina Pro Plan at the time, deep in it, you know? Yeah. And he just like, that was his like introduction. Although I will say when we first got Harper, he did love this raw feeder Gohan. Yeah. You ever see YouTube? Gohan the Husky YouTube. on YouTube? No, I'm going to have He's to look like, that up. Uh, it's great. It's like, it's very, it's not as much educational as it is more like lifestyle. Like this is a guy that feeds, you know, DIY grocery store raw food to this husky that just loves it. I mean, just this beautiful dog. And I would watch that and I was like, I, I was never. This was year, like years ago. When we yeah, yeah. This is, one. this was like before Five the business ago. and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to work at the DMV. I was the person that would take you out on your driver test and renew your driver license and oh, everything. Nice. Kinsey was, uh, worked at a nonprofit, big, big brothers, big sisters. So that's what we were doing at the time. Um, but yeah, we would watch this, this guy and I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And then, I was, of course, against it. I was like, no, that's so dangerous. We could never. <laughs> but I was too at the never... time. It was just like an intriguing thing. It was like, we'd never really thought about feeding dogs something different than kibble. And funny enough, like three or four years ago, before we got into any of this, we have a uh, footage of an Instagram story we did for National Dog Day. And we're adding like eggs and apples and stuff to our dog's food before we even knew what kibble toppers were. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So, and um, so. I mean, we took Harper to the vet one time. And Bryce was like, oh, by the way, I saw this raw feeding. And they were like, no. Don't the classic. Do it. She was like, do yeah. not do that. But then forward, we I was in the bath and he listened to this podcast with Dr. Karen Becker. And he was like, we literally have to change everything. And we lived like three hours from a raw dog food company. So mm -hmm. we got in the car, drove, he, we picked up our order. And it was just, it was way too much too fast. Like we went. We went full DIY to begin with. Yeah. Which was ridiculous, especially for living in Wyoming. I don't know if anyone listening to this lives there, but you have access to nothing. Like Walmart and Safeway are your options for getting stuff. They don't have organ meat. They don't have meaty bones. They don't have any of that. Yeah. So it was really hard and like really overwhelming. And our two Aussies did not 
they still don't like anything raw. They'll do frozen. They'll do freeze dry. Like they won't eat gently cooked. They won't eat raw liver, but if you freeze it, they'll eat it. So it's like a total texture thing, I think. Yeah, but so it was like really, really discouraging to like spend all this time and money creating these meals and then they like won't even touch them. So that was tough, but yeah. We're but like, like if we just share about it and yeah, it's very much just wanting to share this journey because like, I mean, I'm sure you know if with your own aha moment, it's like you learn that and you're like, oh my gosh, of course, like, of course this makes sense. And so it's, you, you can't go back. It's like, once you learn that, you cannot unlearn that. So it was discouraging, but at the same time, we're like, we got to make this work. Like we know this new information, we got to make this work. And so, like I said earlier, we had about 200,000 followers on TikTok. And I said, I think we start sharing about feeding with dogs and just share what we learn along the way. And our audience turned out to be really receptive to that. You know, I think that we kind of went from offering a lot of cosmetic stuff to being an account that offers a lot of value and a lot of education. And so that's really how we got into this. Wonderful. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's never like this one thing, right? There's like this yes. culmination of, mm -hmm. of just different experiences and things that we are, um, that, that we learn and see and then like finding somebody like a Karen Becker who is incredible, obviously. Yeah. Um, and just one, one day it's like this switch flips and you're like, Oh my gosh, I yes. can never go back. And like that feeling right there is what we want every pet parent to feel, you know, is that feeling like, Oh my gosh, like I can see it now. I can see the whole picture clearly. But I will say in the least like stressful, judgmental, shameful way. Like yeah. Cause it's like, once you have that aha moment, you can't immediately do what you want to do. You know, so many people don't make enough money to spend on a commercial raw dog food. They don't have access to stores that have those organ meats and meaty bones. They don't have time. They yeah. Don't have, yeah. So if you're listening to this, if you have to start small, start small. Mm -hmm. But we can start somewhere, you know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's a journey. And it's about mm -hmm. the journey. It's not really about the destiny. I mean, we're all going to. We're all going to be gone one day anyway. It's not about where we end up. It's about the journey. Yes. And so like learn. I think that's the biggest thing for me is like learn something every day. And mm -hmm. if we can implement it, that's wonderful. Um, yeah. So you've said a few things that I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to stop. Tell me more about this van life. <laughs> oh man. So it was March 2020, right? Because mm -hmm. it was the year we got married. But like, for the whole previous year before that, we had a couple that we would watch on YouTube yeah. that lived like full-time van life. And we were just obsessed. Like every week we were so excited for their new like vlog to come out, just super, super into them and would daydream like, oh, it'd be so cool to have a van. But this is when we were very, very, very much in like a conventional world. So the thought of only having enough things to fit in a van, like was just unthinkable to yeah. me the thought of only having a van not having another car was unthinkable to me like being able to generate our own income was insane to me so but like the thing that i mean because at that time we were working conventional jobs i think you and i were making like maybe under 30 but for sure under forty thousand dollars a year combined so we were making just very little money you know kind of yeah. right out of college and stuff and the real appeal to us was like the ability to travel on a budget. It was the ability to travel <clears throat> and all you have to pay for is food and gas. You know, you don't have to pay for a hotel or anything like that. I mean, like a car, the car payment. Yeah, too, yeah, but. totally. But not like your, your classic travel costs. And so we kind of, it, it just, this idea in our head of potentially pursuing van life just kept growing and growing a little bit. And then eventually we started looking at vans. You know, we got that stimmy. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought, we bought a 23rd, no, a 2010 Mercedes Sprinter van um, for $13,000. Sight unseen. Didn't look at it. Bought it from Illinois. Had it shipped out to us. And we got it and immediately got to work. So we should we should eventually put all the content we culminated throughout this process yeah, together we but we stripped everything out i have you know videos of kinsey on the ground like scrubbing this just gunk that's on the floor to try and clean everything 
We laid down a subfloor. We put in insulation. Rattle trap. Rattle trap. We um, made, like built a bed. We built a table. We ran electric wires and everything. And it sucked. It was <laughs> like, not. It not. was. It was so. It wasn't horrible. Like the what we did was really good. And and the van was decently nice. But like we had a bed that converted into a table and then there was a section that was supposed to be like the kitchen counter and everything. And we just never got to that. We never got to any of the plumbing or like actually hooking up all the wires. And the bed was so uncomfortable and he was so adamant on any time we went anywhere. Like even to my mom's house, he's like, let's sleep in the van. And I'm like, there's a bed right in a bathroom. Like, (laughs) like right there. He was always like, Nope, we're sleeping in the van. And I was like, one of the really good memories we do have from it is we when we lived in Wyoming, we lived right by the mountains, and we went and found like this spot where it's like you drive down this dirt road and there's trees all around you. It's a total forest, and at the very end is one campsite, and it's like we built this big fire, and we had the van open, and we had the dogs – and it didn't end up ending well, if you want to tell that side of it. But that was like, that was one of the, my best times in the van. We made micheladas. And <laughs> I think the tomato juice was just off because we didn't even drink that much. Um, I so think it I, wasn't cooled properly. Yeah. So I wasn't like super drunk getting sick. Like, I'm sure we were a little drunk. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but we ended up having to leave at like 3 a.m. because I was so sick. And we're pinned between these two trees. Like we, we like kind of wedge the van. And so it's pitch black in the middle of the forest. Spooky. So scary. And I remember just like cranking the wheel and then backing up a little bit and cranking it the other way and going forward a little. And it took us like 20 or 30 minutes to get out. Kinsey's throwing up the whole time. And then we're like finally out of the forest on the main road. And it's like a pretty steep road. And I look back and she's got the side door open and she's like throwing up. And my first instinct is like, oh, like slow down. I need to make sure she's okay. Well, by slowing down, the sliding door comes flying at her neck while she's like, out this car throwing up and luckily she caught it and you're strong because that door was heavy yeah oh um, and we eventually got home and finally got her taken care of but but then we sold the goodness. van in order to start the business yeah we used all of our wedding money to buy the van converted the van sold the van <laughs> to start a business so because we got still married. haven't taken a honeymoon yeah we got you married during have... covid oh my goodness that's yeah. crazy. So y'all tried to upfit this thing on your own. That's like serious props to y'all. Yeah. I When I tell you it was DIY, we literally bought the van and that day we went to Walmart and bought tools. Walmart. We didn't oh have anything. We, we didn't even have a Home Depot in our town. Didn't have a drill. Nothing. Like, okay. We learned everything on YouTube. It's crazy. I used to, um, I, I used to work at a dealership and I uh, did all the admin for the the guy who ran our fleet department. So that was one of our big things was we sold sprinters and then, but we did the, like all the upfit. So like, <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. We want to do van life again. And that's what we would do. We yeah. would buy yes. it from somebody like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, oh my gosh, that reminded me so much of like the, um, gosh, I don't even know how old I was. I was obviously old enough to drive. I was maybe 18 when the Blair Witch Project came out and I went and my mom and stepdad, they had just moved out to Suffolk, Virginia, and it was all wooded all around them. And like nothing was really built out yet. It was just all wooded. So I went and I picked up my brother and I took him and we went and saw the Blair Witch Project and it was like midnight and I'm driving him back to my mom's house because he was only like 16 at the time. And um, then I went, you know, I was going to drop him off and then go home. And it's like midnight and I'm driving out and it's just pitch black. All like, you know, there are no street lights. It's all wooded. And I'm like, we had just watched the Blair Witch Oh, God. And I'm like, oh, God. That's oh, terrifying. <laughs> Oh, man. Absolutely terrifying. There's not much scarier than a dark forest. <laughs> yes. By right? yourself. Like, yeah. all alone. Seriously. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> so, um, fun stories. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the pets. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the pets. Oh, yeah, the pets. Um, so, what were what do you think, Summer, that, like, looking back, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you're, like, 
you beat yourself up for that we shouldn't beat ourselves up for, right? We're all learning. But like when you look back, we all have those things that we just kind of beat ourselves up for. So what, what would you say some of those things are? Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely have mine. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, I think just not being prepared at all emotionally or mentally and being pretty young, getting our first dog, I think. I, like, is, I'd like to almost be this age getting a first dog. Yeah, like, obviously she's healthy and alive and well, and, like, we did the best we could, but we were, like, just new in a relationship and, like, still working out how to, like, live with each other, and, like, we didn't fight all the time, but, like, we were really young, and, like, yeah. I feel like the fights kind of affected her, and she's just pretty anxious now, pretty stressed out, and so... I just wish we would have been in a more stable place mm -hmm. before getting any animals, but obviously we're all here. We're all okay. Yeah. I mean, f funny enough for me, I have a lot of like current regrets. So like one of the things I'm kind of grappling with right now is the idea that like, if I don't take my dogs to go run in the field for 30 minutes every single day, I'm taking away time later on, like taking time off of their life later on. And that's just like, it's really hard to grapple with, but we also have to understand that like, they don't need something necessarily every single day at the exact same time. Like there's room for flexibility. And I think that there's just kind of a level of like being hard on yourself as a pet parent. And that kind of is, is really discouraging in the past. You know, I definitely regret the food we fed them. We were feeding Rachel Ray nutrition when we first got Harper. So like, you know, you go to the store and you just look for whatever bag looks the best. And so yeah. I definitely wish we would have uh, kind of looked into that more, but if it meant changing anything of right now, I wouldn't change a single thing we've done, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. I, I imagine that uh, not having children of my own that, you know, having it's similar, not the same, but similar yeah. to like raising kids. You're always like, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. But at the same time, like I try to think when when I think about like all the horrible things that I wish I had never done with my pets, it's like. But they lived a really good life or they are, if they're still here, they are living a really good life and they're not mm -hmm. living in a shelter. And like, you know what I mean? Like th yeah. there's so much that we are giving them. That's where I try to turn myself around. Yeah, yeah. I love that mindset because like you said, we are giving them a really incredible life and we can sit here and pick apart everything we've done in the past, everything we're going to do in the future, but everybody's doing the best they can with the information they have. And that includes ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? It is, we just did, and I think – I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, we just did, which I think you might be interested in this, um, biofeedback sessions with two of our three dogs, and we found out that – so Banks, our one that we adopted from Texas, he left Texas with another dog, and then we did embark, and they did embark later, and it turns out they're like siblings. And we just did a biofeedback session uh, with like applied kinesiology and – she was like, yeah, there was some like really big, like horror trauma of like six weeks and 13 weeks. And like six weeks was when he got separated from his mom. And 13 weeks is when he got separated from his like sibling that we didn't know at the time. And so that was really hard to hear. But she asked if he was happy in our house now. And he is. But it took us a minute to be like, oh, that is so hard to hear. And like. We were like, well, should we have not gotten him? But the couple that we were friends with that were fostering him, they weren't going to keep him anyways. They were going to have him be adopted out and they ended up keeping the other one. And so it was just like, had to really take a minute and be like, no, it's okay. Like, he's, she said he's happy. He's giving off the energy that he's happy. Like, he's very well cared for. We love him very much. It's one of those kind of philosophical questions of like humanity and us having these pets that we take from their family and like that's one of the things it's like that's how the world is right now do i love it no absolutely not but you know i love these dogs to death obviously so i'm glad we have them yeah. <laughs> selfishly yeah <gasps> it, it is a like very moral question <laughs> Yeah, and I am definitely. so interested in the biofeedback sessions. Um, okay. 
if I had known about it, I probably would have tried to work it into today's episode, but um, maybe we can talk about that later on. Yes. Yeah, so of course. You, and you've already talked about, you know, growing this large audience and kind of having these videos that go viral. So you do have a lot of people that are watching you on various social media platforms every day, which is wonderful because one, there are a lot of accounts that don't put out really good information that go viral. And that is so frustrating for me. So you guys are putting out really good information that's going viral. And that's awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, but what are like some of the, cause I, I know even for me, I seem to get the same questions over and over. What are some of the like questions that you're seeing from pet parents that you're just constantly seeing come up over and over and over again? It's a really good question. So it's not necessarily one specific question, but a very big theme that I notice is like, help, my dog is having severe whatever. And like, I think that they're coming to us as not a last resort because I think like, integrative and holistic medicine a lot of the times is people's last resort but it's they, that they don't theme. have the answer yeah it's that theme like they're hoping that like we'll give them the answer of why their dog has reoccurring ear infection or why their dog has these terrible hot spots or why they're having incontinence like obviously things way above our pay grade like way way above what we know how to do we're not vets you know and so it's that like last ditch effort almost theme that I notice a lot. Yeah. It's like they don't have, they, they're, they're struggling and they don't have the answers that they're looking for. And, you know, I, I'm guessing that most of these parents have probably tried to get a lot of answers already. They've probably tried to go to the vet. They've tried to do a lot of different things. And so like Kinsey said, they're kind of like, okay, like, is there anything I can do nutritionally? Um, trying to think what other things I'm seeing a lot. A lot of people want us to review pet foods, which is always really interesting. And I shy away from that just because I mean, Rachel does a great job. Rachel does a fantastic job of that. I don't think it's necessarily our place, but I also rather than like reviewing specific pet foods, I would rather try to teach pet parents how to look at a label. And we haven't really done much of that yet, which we might should, but I want to teach them to be able to go and find out that information there's themselves because there's so many different pet foods out there. There's so many pet foods popping up all the time. So many different categories of kibble and freeze dried and fresh and raw and all the different stuff. So giving them the knowledge to go and say, okay, I'm looking for a pet food. I have these parameters in my mind. I'm going to see what fits in there. That's really what I want to focus on. But yeah, like Kinsey said, it's just a lot of people with a lot of different scenarios, but the common theme is they don't have any answers right now. And then I would say also like the specific of, I have a six-year-old Doberman. Can I feed him? Blah, blah, blah. I have a, like, I think people, I think there's a really big misconception that there's like super, super breed specific things for every realm of nutrition. And I wonder why that is. Maybe I because know. there are big food companies creating breed specific diets that are a bunch of BS. But that's none of our business. Yeah, that's none of our business. <laughs> none of our, of course. Yes, that was the first thing. I'm like, visualizing the pet food aisle as you're yeah, talking about. I, I can literally see we have a video of cooper way back when we first got him as a puppy digging at his bag of royal canaan with a bright big golden retriever on it yeah. you know it's ridiculous so that's interesting to me that and, and i think i see a lot of the same things that you're talking about kinsey with like this I don't know where else to turn to. I have asked my vet. I have taken my dog to the vet over and over and over again, and I'm not finding any resolution, right? So Mm -hmm. I know you're hopefully soon to be certified as a holistic pet health coach. And so I know like right now you're like, oh, this is way above my my pay grade, but I'm literally talking about all these things people are coming to you for. I'm like, no, you can absolutely help them with this. Yeah. Um, Soon, so soon. Yeah, very soon. That will feel good too to yeah. like have more answers. But, definitely. But then it's also the raises the question of like, how do you have time? And like, who do you choose to help? And you know, we we tell people all the time like we have one video with three hundred thousand comments on it, and it's like, how do you even begin to sort through the amount of people that need help? And we're gonna try, but it's gonna be a tall task. Yeah, I think, but that's why 
it's so important for people like you to be putting out this kind of content to kind of direct people and show people that there are other options. There are other avenues of gaining knowledge and of empowering themselves to learn and grow and like figure things because so many things, so many things that dogs and cats are going to the vet for could easily, like if we were just more proactive at home, uh, we would not be going to the vet nearly as much as we are. Absolutely. And you'll hear so many of the, you know, incredible vets that we talk to at AHVMA, they say, veterinarians thrive in an emergency setting. Like that is where they are the absolute best and a lot of the other stuff we can help pet parents with. Yes, absolutely. So kind of switching it up and we are going to talk about your book, (laughs) but before we do, um, you guys recently, not well, kind of recently started the BK Pet Cast, which is so fun, and I was so thrilled to have uh, to have you guys ask me to come on. And uh, what? Because you've had some really, really incredible guests already on your podcast. What are some of like your favorite moments? Were there any like, oh my gosh, that was incredible? I can't like, I didn't know that. I'm just learning this for the first time, or like awestruck, or like I know I I, I so fangirl out sometimes. Yeah, I I tell people all the time, I'm like, the podcast feels like a selfish thing, because we just get to talk to the people we want to talk to, you know, I mean, there have been some absolutely incredible moments. One of the first ones I can remember is talking with Angela Ardolino for the first time. And obviously, you know her well, we were like, what? Yeah, the whole time we were like, what do you mean? Like, that's unbelievable. And so to truly learn about the benefits of cannabis and mushrooms for our pets was so unreal and that's like that's become a staple of what we recommend to pet parents now um had dr judy morgan on multiple times to talk about flea and tick medication and heartworm medication one of the ones we did with her was probably one of my favorites we had a friend who went to the vet with her cat and obviously it's a friends of a friend of ours she sees our content she follows a lot of the tips we provide and she feeds a raw diet and It was the same vet that told me, wow, it was the same exact vet or vet office, at least, that told me raw diets were bad three or four years ago. So she goes and tells them that uh, she feeds raw and they like whip out this pamphlet of all this big kibble propaganda talking about how byproducts are comprised of clean organ meat. So we hit up Dr. Morgan and said, hey, we had the situation. We'd love for you to come on the podcast and dispel some of these myths. And her reply literally was, ha, 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 ha. I would love to tear this apart. And she did. It was, it was so incredible. What about you? <laughs> um, I think for me, it's not necessarily like certain people or anything. It's just like the uninterrupted, like 30 minutes to an hour of just like this person's time and energy and focus. And like, I don't know, it just feels really special to be like connecting with people in a really intentional way. I think that's what it is for me. And to be, I mean, to really just be able to find these experts and go super deep into a specific topic, because you know, you've talked to them. There's, they have so much knowledge. There's such a huge knowledge base. And I think that like, I think we're even going to start transitioning our podcast to to be a little bit different in the sense of right now it's very much for the pet parents, helping them enrich and extend their lives. And that's for sure going to stay. But I think we're going to do a lot more about the pet industry as a whole. We we just got in touch with a, a microbiologist who's doing some testing for a pet food company and like testing for pathogens and stuff. And that is so interesting to me, you know? Yeah. So And just like the passion that people have behind this, like I'd say – most if not all of the people that own these companies or founded these companies like they weren't just like well there was a gap in the market and i wanted to make some money it's like they have these incredible stories and passion behind it and like really tried to feel like fill a true need for so many people and so i think like that like selfishly for me like fills my cup up and like just makes me feel even more passionate about everything that we do yeah and like there are even days where we're like oh like we have a podcast episode today we don't we don't really want to do it and every time we sit down after we're done we're like 
oh my god that was incredible i'm fired up yeah. so it's it's an amazing thing we're so glad we started it and have no plans to stop anytime soon what about you oh well yeah i actually like literally almost everything you guys said i have the same feel like it is the most rewarding thing i do and also like i feel like the most selfish thing i do <laughs> <laughs> because i like getting to contact people that i would never otherwise have any business contacting and talking to them and ha having them come and talk to me like giving me like you said giving me their time i'm just like like in awe of these people it, who are like why would you come talk to me <laughs> <laughs> and it's like in the conversation i mean i'm sure you've gone through this people tell us all the time like oh you don't have the credentials and stuff to be talking about this it's like this these podcasts are a form of research that will never result in any sort of credentials but like think about how valuable the information that we get is it is and i actually i had a, a guest that i was interviewing the other day and she was like, I went back to some of your older podcasts and start like, so I'm a, I'm a binger. If I find a podcast, I start from the beginning and I just binge. I can't, I can't <laughs> help it. That's just how I am. I'm going to listen until I don't care if you're a thousand episodes in, I'm going to binge. <laughs> through. Um, but she was like, I went back to some of your older podcasts and I was talking about one of my cats in I guess an older podcast where, so I have one cat who had a perennial urethostomy, which basically is just having the penis removed, which sounds horrible. So I would rather say perennial urethostomy, yeah. but um, he just kept blocking. And uh, when he was in surgery, the, the, so I had to get a special surgeon to come in because the that I had didn't know how to do the surgery. Had to get a special surgeon to come in. Well, apparently she was doing the surgery by herself and nobody was watching and paying attention and he stopped breathing and died. And so it was a long, like it was a long road to recovery for him. He had seizures and he didn't walk for a month and it was a whole, like he's doing great now. He lost his eyesight from the brain swelling. But other than that, like you would never know that anything is wrong with him. But she, she said, you know, if I had not gone back and listened to that episode, I would not like, she called three or four different vets offices to find out if they had somebody like an extra person there watching the animals during surgery, like you would with like an anesthesiologist with, you know, humans, it's yeah. expected. We don't, think about these things. Right. And I didn't at the time either to ask these questions. She's like, I passed up multiple vet's offices to do my cat's dental cleaning because they, I, I asked them this question and they were like, no, we don't have anybody doing that. So it's really like, those are the moments where it's just like some random person who's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I heard this. And I, I, I would never would have thought about it, but that's so incredibly important and thank you. And now I, I know something and I have implemented something with my pets. That's the thing that like really keeps me going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's literally what it's all about. Like, if you can just help one person like that, I mean, that's life saving advice. Yeah. You know, like that, that could have potentially saved that cat's life. So, unreal. Yeah. I mean, you never know, but that's, <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite, favorite moments, I think. Yeah. Um, but thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so, okay, tell me a little bit about this book that y'all have coming out, which I'm like super stoked for, but tell me, tell me, why did you write it? What is it all about? What's in it? Who is this book for? Tell me, tell me everything. Well, thank you, first of all. Well, you may start us. It's okay. We are very like spiritual, woo woo, whatever. And we're powerful manifestors. And we, not last August, but the August before. Maybe a few months before that, we're like, wouldn't it be so like cute and fun and silly to write a book? <laughs> like that would be so crazy. What would we write about? Like we knew it would be like a culmination of all of our content. So we just kind of wrote this little table of contents, like set it, forget it. And then a few months later, someone reached out and was like, I'm a publisher. Have you thought of writing a book? If you already have a book deal, like nothing but the best for you. 
love to hear back from you. And we messaged the back or emailed back and we were like, we don't have a book deal. But we do have a table of contents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we hopped on a call and in like true Bryce and Kinsey fashion, we were like, so we have blah, 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 blah. Just info Yeah. Dump. And she was like, slow down a little bit and kind of zero in on what we're feeling here. Sweet. This. She's our editor. She's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So uh, we spent... From August 2022 to December 2022, mm -hmm. writing it. And it was like, it, it actually <laughs> happened a lot. The, the writing portion happened a lot faster than I thought it would. And I think that's because we basically were taking all the stuff we were already sharing on our content and put it into a book. So the real motivation for me was like, when you go to our page, I think we do share a lot of really valuable content, but it's just a jumbled mess. There's like, there's no way to sort through it. There's no way to say, oh, I have a specific question. Like, how can I go find that video? And so and we, it's not for lack of trying. Like, no. we've tried to do playlists. We've tried to do story highlights, but none of it just, <clears throat> excuse me, none of it really set up our account to be able to go through and consume all that information. And so, yeah, we really wanted to take that and put it into a book. So the first part of the book, we talk a lot about the history of kibble, some of the problematic issues with kibble. We talked about how to improve um, different diets. Why and then, fresh food. Yeah, why fresh food is important. And then we get into the recipes. And that, I think, is really the heart of this book. There's 30 different recipes. I think eight of them are homemade meals, so raw meals, gently cooked meals. Then we have lots of different treat recipes, supplements, and superfoods. Um, we talk about mental enrichment. Kinsey wrote an incredible section. She basically wrote this entire section herself on removing toxins from the home, which is, I think, a really valuable thing that a lot of people don't think about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, you know, we're very proud of this. And it's endorsed by Dr. Judy Morgan, Dr. Angie Krauss, and Dr. Ian Billinghurst. He was a pretty wild one for me because he's the creator of the barf diet. I'm sure you know, that's biologically appropriate raw food for those that don't. And he's like the father of raw. That's what people call him. And his ratios are what we based a lot of our recipes on. So it was really, really impactful to get his endorsement on that. And like I said, Dr. Judy Morgan endorsed it. She actually wrote the foreword and reviewed the entire thing for accuracy. So I, we really just want this to be a resource that pet parents can use to stay curious about all of this stuff. We mm -hmm. kind of want to plant that seed in them of like, oh, maybe I'll add a little fresh food. Maybe I'll switch to 50-50 now and like just kind of keep that curious thought going. I think this book is really just for anybody that is maybe fed up with having multiple pets pass away at too young of an age. I think it's for people that take their own health very seriously and are really conscious of what they're putting into their bodies and the products they're using that also have pets to get curious about that. Um, yeah. And like one of the things I really love about this book is I think it can benefit pet parents at whatever stage in this journey they're in. If you are a brand new beginner, you only feed kibble and you've never heard about any of this stuff, we have parts that are really slow, really easy and accessible ways to get into this. If you're an experienced raw feeder, we got some extra meals and some extra supplements and superfoods for you to try out and start implementing in, into your pet's diet. And that's really, that's really a culmination of everything we try to do with our content too. We don't want to push this one certain agenda on people because you know better than most. Every dog is an individual. And so we want to offer some guidance that lets pet parents kind of start implementing stuff, but really just focus on meeting them where they're at. Awesome. I, you know, I think um, if, if somebody comes across your book and has no idea, like they're just the average pet parent who is going to the grocery store and buying kibble off the shelf and going to the veterinarian's office every year and getting the booster shots and blah, 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 doing all the things that we are supposed to be doing as good pet parents. I know that was me. I was, yes. I lived in my vet's office for a long time. <laughs> um, and if they could get their hands on your book, it could make such a huge difference in so many pets lives. For me, that book was Dr. Odette Suter's book, you know, things that your vet would never tell you or things your mm -hmm. vet doesn't know. I don't remember exactly the exact title. Yeah. I've got it behind me somewhere. But like that book, it was one of the very first books I read when I started feeding my pets 
much like you, I was adding stuff to my dogs and cat and cats food. I was just like cooking up chicken vegetables and adding it on top of the kibble, not knowing what I was doing or why I was doing it other than like being like nurturing and motherly. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and, um, that was one of the first books I read and it like literally changed everything for me. And I think for like this new generation of pet parents, your book could be the same. So that's really what we hope for. Cause like you said, there are so many wonderful books, Dr. Suiter's the forever dog was that book for us. And so to just be even in the same breath as some of these books is, is really an honor. But like you said, I really hope that this book can kind of spark that, that igniter in people. So they say, okay, I'm going to go down this journey and boy, is it a journey. <laughs> <It> <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to be um, aware of, of your time, and I appreciate you both for coming on and, and talking to my listeners. Probably pulling from some of the things you've already said, pulling from the book that is going to be coming out, which I will link in the show notes. Um, what If you could only give three tips to pet parents, and let's get a soundbite going, <laughs> if you could only give it. three tips to pet parents to get them started, to get their wheels turning in their head, what would they be? You know, this is actually a great opportunity to go to an outline for a YouTube video I have titled 12 Things I Wish I Knew Before Getting a Dog. So oh, yay. Um, let me take a look here. So number one, I'm going to give you a few different ones. I'm not going to give you the whole video. You're going to have to wait for yeah. that. But I think the first thing for me would be don't underestimate what it means to be a pet parent. I think a lot of people, you know, we see in the movies, people get dogs for Christmas and birthdays and stuff, and just don't really have an understanding of what that entails. And it entails a lot more than many people think, you know, we're talking vet visits, we're talking pet insurance, if you want to feed fresh food, we're definitely talking more of an expense and freezer space and all this different stuff. So if if you're going to get another dog, just make sure that you kind of understand that there's a lot that goes into it um for me it'd be be gentle yeah with yourself that's definitely one and of with mine. your pet know that this is their first time experiencing life as a dog in the home of people and it's your first time with this dog um and it's just really about getting to know each other and knowing at the end of the day like you are doing the absolute best you can with the information you have and your pet is so lucky that you even care or you're getting curious about anything or that you even feed them. Like, I think that that's my number two. Yeah. And then I think the last one definitely fits into everything that we do. And it's feed more fresh food. You know, any, any addition of fresh food into your dog's diet can literally give you more time with them. We're talking kibble toppers. We're talking feeding 50-50 kibble and raw or kibble and gently cooked. We're talking feeding fully raw food. Maybe you can only replace the treats you feed with a single ingredient freeze dried options, but those things can give you more time with your pet and then switch it up. You know, variety feeding. I think that's one of the keys to longevity. So you buy chicken liver treats, buy beef liver next time. You fed raw pork, try raw turkey. So fresh foods, feed the rainbow, feed the variety. But like Kenzie said, be gentle on yourself because it's already hard as it is, much less trying to do all this extra stuff that we're doing here. <laughs> I think that's a perfect place to stop with being gentle with yourself. I know we all struggle. We yeah. all struggle with that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So thank you both, Bryce and Kenzie, so much for being here, for giving your time to our listeners. And where can they find you? Yeah, Online, absolutely. Everywhere. Um, so we're basically the BK pets everywhere and that's, uh, BK Bryce and Kenzie. So BK pet, the BK pets on all social media platforms. You can find our website with all the recommended products that we love at the BK pets.com. And that's where you can also find our guides and all the, the online resources that we have to offer. Thank you awesome. so much, Jessica. We really oh, appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I appreciate you guys so much. And thank you again. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. 
Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside.